So if you search for Python, you'll see we've got a couple of nodes. We've got the C Python node, which connects to Python via uh, C Python interpreter. So everything's passed in memory. We also have the older Python node. And then we also have a Jython node, which uses a uh, Java interpretation of Python. Here, I'd recommend using the C Python node, where we'll be able to utilize all of your uh, modules that you have installed locally uh, from uh, Python installation. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure our machine to connect to Python. So if you double click on the node, it'll pull up the options for it. And in the integration options, you'll need to specify where is the Python 3 or Python 3x, 3.9, 3.6, 3.11, whatever, uh, DLL. And so you'll have to navigate to that. And for me, I'm using mine under my C users username location. Additionally, you can supply uh, like a Python path variable to specify where to find specific modules that you, you may need. Here I've uh, specified what I need for connecting to Python. Now I'm going to test the integration. And this is just going to run a quick script to see, all right, can we pass data in and out of a Python process? And here you'll see there are no red errors. That means on my machine, I have Python configured. The next thing I'll want to do is I'll want to supply the script file that I'm going to be running. When I click the browser, it'll pull up a file browser and I can navigate to the model that I want to pull in. In this case, I've got a single pro signal processing model that'll take some uh, pressure time history and return some uh, acoustic processing and give me a decibel level uh, for, a, for a couple of different sensors. So I'll select that. All right, now I need to specify what is my data coming in and out of this process. There are a couple of ways of, of detailing that. One is simply by connecting uh, data in and data out. So if I take an output parameter and I give it some name, you know, worst L, like the worst audio in uh, logarithmic scale, what it's going to do is it's going to look into that script and connect my variable worst L to the variable within that script called worst L. And if I open this script, I should see if that is defined, right? Worst underscore L. And if I want to double check, I can just copy and paste it here. I also want to make sure that I've got my acoustic data being brought in there. Like so. I'll throw a start and an end. Let me add a default attachment and I'll supply that signal file and I can run this really quickly. And that'll trigger my Python run. And I can see everything that was run here. Right. I can see my job out. 
So that's my standard out. You can see my standard error. I can see the directory where it was run. And I can also see it created some pictures in that script as well. And there's my output data. So I had mentioned that there were a couple of ways of defining how to pass data in and out of a Python script. And I had showed that you could match the variable name in, in a workflow to a variable name within the script. Uh, there is another way that I'd like to demonstrate. Here I've got a CPython node where I'm pointing to a script for the aerodynamics of a wing. And if I open that script, you'll see that I've specified this header within the comments at the very top of my script, which defines the input and output uh, for this particular script. So this is a way of defining, all right, what's an input parameter, what's an output, and what are what are the, the limitations on the data going in and out of this script? So if a subject matter expert uh, knows what data can be passed in and out of their scripts, they can define this header, and those sort of connections can be done automatically. So with this, I can run the parameter chooser here, and it'll recognize that I've got these variables as inputs, my aspect ratio, my reference area, my wetted area, things like that. And I can get the lift to drag ratio out. And it automatically detected from that header what the input and output of my script looks like. And it created the associated uh, workflow um, based off of that definition. So that's another way in which you can uh, specify uh, connecting to, to a Python script. In addition to being able to use Python as a part of an automation process, we also have a very quick way to connect to Python outside of an automation process. So once I've generated uh, all of my data, I may want to be able to bring that data quickly into Python in order to do some post-processing there, right? To take advantage of all of the uh, modules and libraries and open source material that exists in Python. So here I've got a problem where I've uh, analyzed an airfoil and I've generated the lift and drag values as well as the derivatives with respect uh, to my design variables for the lift and drag. I've brought that, I've got that data here in a couple of uh, tables that we've uh, generated in Mode Frontier. And I can bring this data into a Python environment using this Py console. So let me click on that now and pull that up here. Let me open up a script. Take a look at this. Um, here we go. So here, with a couple of lines of code, I can read in the metadata of those given tables and identify what are objectives, what are inputs, all of the information we stored about our tables. And I'm going to bring it into a pandas data frame here. And then with this data, I'm going to train uh, some adjoint enhanced or gradient enhanced uh, response surfaces. So I'll take advantage of, of some of the open source libraries out there. So here I can run this. And I'm writing out uh, some of the information that is automatically brought in, right? It, it recognizes what my input bounds are. It recognizes what are my gradient information and what are my objectives. And it's going to train a gradient enhanced neural network. And then it should also train 
uh, gradient enhanced creaking. And it'll do some plotting as well. And in a very seamless way, we've tried to incorporate uh, our data uh, creation with some of the, the Python features, right? So uh, in an ideal world, the, uh, the data analysts, the data scientists should become part of your design process. And so breaking down those barriers uh, to inclusion are important, right? So here you can see the validation uh, between the true against the gradient enhanced creaking and the gradient enhanced neural network. This is for, uh, for lift and we can also see it for drag. So that's another way that we can uh, exchange data very easily uh, with Python. Uh, the last way that uh, we try to tighten the coupling between uh, Python and our uh, Isteco ecosystem is through a feature called PyRSM, where you can uh, create a reusable RSM process based off of uh, Python libraries. So here I've got a problem where I've got a high fidelity uh, predictive method and a low fidelity predictive method. And I want to combine uh, both data sources via an RSM. And I want to utilize some uh, Python libraries to do so. So if I go to my design space, I can see that I've got four different data tables. I've got the combined data table of 200 low fidelity runs and five high fidelity runs. I've got my high fidelity table with just the high, high five, five high fidelity runs. I've got a gold standard set, which I will use for validation, sampled from the high fidelity data set. And I've got my low fidelity 200 runs. And I could build RSMs with each of these individually, right? I could build with my high fidelity against the gold standard, or I could use the low fidelity against the gold standard. But what I wanna highlight here is my ability to utilize this combined uh, data sources via Pi RSM. So I've selected my combined data set. I'll choose my gold standard high fidelity designs for validation. And then in my create and configure models, I will choose this pi RSM option. So I'm going to predict the flow rate via a pi RSM script. And if I click on the calculator here, I can specify what that script is. That script should contain a training function and an evaluation function. And I'll load an example script that I have. So this is a Python script where I've got a training function, an evaluate function, and then I also have an evaluate with standard deviation. So I could utilize the standard deviation capabilities in newer versions or not. So there's a couple of options there. In this case, I'm going to utilize both uh, low and high fidelity as distinct training sets and train a multi-fidelity model utilizing the SMT toolbox in Python. One of the nice things about this is you can have a data scientist create this definition of a training and evaluate uh, functions and then distribute that within, uh, within a company so as to leverage, um, leverage that expertise in as many situations as possible. So now that I've specified what script I want to use for my PI RSM, I can train this function It'll start running Python. 
and there it evaluates my error metrics. And this is significantly better than if I were to have run with just the high fidelity or just the low fidelity. All right. So if I were to show that, I can use the high fidelity here. I'll train a couple of different types. And you'll see the high fidelity with five data points can't do much at all. The low fidelity with a lot more data points, but a worse a data source can't match it either something of uh, r squared of 0.85 so you can see how being able to connect to python and take advantage of uh, the state of the art um, data science and ai modules uh, can really improve your design process